So a couple of weeks, I had, I don't know if I would call it a privilege, but I happened to find myself in America, and uh, I had the privilege to have access to a lot of meals, and a lot of good meals by that. And I had to honestly guard my heart not to pig out, just throw my face into the food and, and enjoy the wonderful meals. And with these wonderful meals came good friends. So I have good friends in America, and I enjoyed these meals with these good friends. But it was just not the same. It wasn't the same as a hearty, home-cooked meal with my family. And tonight in our text, we see something similar. We see people gathering, supposedly as a church, but treating it as a pig-out session, stuffing their faces. And worse of all, uh, treating people that should be family, they treat them as strangers. We see Paul start the 1 Corinthians 11 in verse 2. He says, Now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I delivered it to you. But tonight, in verse 17 in our text, he's not commending them. He's rebuking the people in the Corinthian church. He says, but in the following instructions, I do not commend you. So this tradition that he's handed over to them, the Lord's Supper, they're not partaking in it. And he's rebuking them for it. They're not acting like Jesus. When you come together as a body, you are supposed to act like a body. But you're not. There is division. There is pride. You're not serving one another. Paul says that, he, told, he tells them, you think you're partaking in the Lord's Supper, but you're not. Why not? It's because they're not partaking in the right way. They forgot who they were supposed to focus on. They were supposed to focus on Jesus. They were supposed to focus on the church, the body, but they're not. The Lord's Supper are for those that are united in one body. Those that are equal because of the gospel. But the Corinthian church... They forgot all of that. They want to stuff their faces and get drunk. Forget the body. It's all about themselves. Some are picking out. Some go hungry. Some go thirsty. And some get drunk. That's not how a body functions. That's not a body because a, a body acts together. In verse 21, Paul is clearly disgusted. He's not commending them for this because of the lack of unity and the clear division in the body. It's not the Lord's Supper that you are eating. Why? Because the Lord's Supper is a unifying meal, and you are not united. The Lord's Supper is there to remind the church of this, its unity in Christ, and therefore with one another. It serves as a reminder of the gospel that unites. And Paul is going to tell them what the Lord's Supper is from verses 17 to 34 that we're going to look at. So what is the Lord's Supper? Well, in short, like I said, the Lord's Supper is a unifying meal. A unifying meal between us and Jesus, us and God, and a unifying meal with one another. It's a love feast that reminds us of Jesus' love for his bride, the church. But because of his love for the church, it reminds us of the love that the church needs to have for one another. It also serves as a reminder of the benefits we receive from Jesus. We receive the inheritance of eternal life, the forgiveness of sin. So that's the reminder, which means it's a church's act with the church. It's not an act for grace groups. It is not a, an act to go to the hospital for the sick, for their healing. There is no superstition here. It's a physical meal that reminds us of a physical man that walked the earth, died for our sins, and rose again for our salvation. There's no superstition. It reminds us of the unity in the gospel. Now, much can be said of this. Books have been written plenty on this topic. But with the danger of not partaking in the right way like the Corinthians... I'd like for us to look at four views from our text to help us partake in the right way. And this will conclude our spiritual disciplines 
for what we've looked for. So let's look at the first view, and that's looking upwards. Looking upward. Verse 23 to 25, read with me. It says, For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This, this is my body for which, for which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Paul says that he received the instruction, instructions of how to conduct yourself along, around the Lord's Supper from the Lord Jesus. He brought it to the church so they should know how to act around the Lord's Supper. He received it from Jesus, from the Lord, and now he's given it to the church and they need to know. He is a faithful servant and he's reminding them of how to partake in the Lord's Supper. Paul helps them focus on Jesus and the ultimate work that Jesus did for them to save them. Paul says, church, look up. Look up to Jesus, our Savior. He was betrayed so that you do not have to be betrayed. Look up. Paul then quotes Jesus' word from, words from Matthew 26, 26 to 28. He says, Jesus' body, the bread, was broken for the forgiveness of your sin. His blood was poured out to wash away all unrighteousness. It is through Jesus' death that our sin is forgiven and our relationship with the Father is reconnected. That thing that, that sin broke, that tore us apart from being in relationship with God. We look upward to Christ and his finished work of salvation. His work, and that is the only way we can be saved. Paul uses these two words, in remembrance, twice in these two verses, four, four, three verses. What should we remember? We should remember that we cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus can. It is the faith that we receive from the Holy Spirit that we put in Christ alone, that will save us. Now, my friend, if you cannot remember what Jesus did for you, I praise the Lord that you hear or that you are listening. It is this act, this act of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, that remembrance that saves you. Jesus died for your sin. He came to serve, be betrayed, and to die so that you can live. If this is not clear, please speak to me or anyone else. Get in contact with me. I would gladly expound on this. Because this is a, a, a matter of life and death. But church. Seeing that Paul writes to a church, I need to address the church, right? And Doug and I did not come together and, and work the sermon out. But as he said this morning, not everybody of Israel is Israel, right? Not everybody in the church is saved, sadly so. Brother, sister, being a church member does not save you. If you are saved, you will be a church member, though. But in our text, Paul writes, he says, Church, your appetite is in the wrong way, in the wrong area. Where was the appetite here? Their appetite was for their bellies. Their, their God was their belly, right? Their appetite was for themselves. Their appetite was not for Christ's body. Their appetite was not for the body of Christ, the church. Being a member of a church does not save you. The bread you eat and the cup you drink are signs of Jesus giving himself for you. When Jesus gave up his body and let his blood be shed, he did it for you. Jesus endured shame and agony of the cross and most of all the wrath of God. For what? For sin. 
sin that we are all guilty of. Bobby Jameson says this, The Lord's Supper proclaims to us the salvation Christ accomplished, finished, completed on the cross. It proclaims to us a salvation that is ours, not earn, but to receive. Family, we should be able to look up to Christ and rejoice in the fact that He saved us as we partake of the meal. That's what we look upward for. But for us to do this, we need to look inward. So we look upward to Christ. <clears throat> Sorry. Look upward to Christ, and now we need to look inward. That's our second view, looking inward. Look at verse 27 to 28. It says, For whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself. Then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Paul is telling the church that they should examine themselves. Look inward. Where's your heart? Look inward and see if you are one with Christ. Don't eat of the bread. Don't drink of the cup if you are not in Jesus. Now, I'm not saying, well, I don't feel like I'm part of Jesus. Because feelings can be deceptive. That is what sin does. It drives a wedge between us and God. It makes us think that, oh, you say you are saved, but you are not. That doubt. Always trying to separate us from the communion with God. Communing with Him. Just like we were before we were saved. That's why Paul is saying, examine yourself. Look and see if you're part of the body. Christ and his body. And if you're not, repent and believe. Look upward to Christ. Look and see if you're part of the body. Now, if you are part of the body of Christ, but there is sin that you need to repent of, look inward. Look to your heart. What should I repent of? Because Christ died for that sin. I can be forgiven. Repent and partake. Look inward to your need for the cross, for the forgiveness of sin. First, repent of your sin and partake. Now, family, for years and years after I got saved, the meal was a serious and dark meal for me. To think of my own sin in light of what I have committed before I got saved, and even after I got saved, it was a dark meal. It was heavy. We should feel heavy because we are sinners. We need to look inward and see where our sins are so that we can forgive, if we find forgiveness in Christ. And that's a good thing because we serve a holy God that hates sin. It should be. Look inward. But there's a flip side to the coin as well. So we look inward to our sin, assess whether we are saved. But there's also a joyful looking. There's a joyful looking up to Christ again. As you look inward, you look upward again. Knowing your sins are forgiven in Him and that we are free from the slavery of sin. Praise the Lord. We don't have to sin, brothers and sisters. But if we do, there is a perfect advocate. First John. The inward look is a serious moment. Looking to sin. But at the same time, it is a joyful looking, looking to Christ, praising Him for setting you free from the slavery of sin. Now that we've seen that because of the forgiveness in Christ by looking inward and looking upward to Jesus, it makes us part of a body. It makes us part of Christ's body. But if we all are part of Christ's body, we are all together in one body the church. Now we should look around. So we look to Christ. He's our Savior. We look inward because we need a Savior. But because of that, we can look around, right? Look at verse 29 to 30. It says, For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. 
That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. Remember, Paul is rebuking the Corinthian church. For what? For not waiting for one another. For being selfish. For only being self-servant. This is my food. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to get drunk. That's how much wine I have. You know, I'm not going to wait for you. Whether you're part of the body or not, I, I'm, I'm focused on myself. They're not partaking together. Basically, not discerning the body. Christ has put us together. We need to discern ourselves and the body. And they're not recognizing what the meal is. This is a, a gospel meal. Like we said, it's a unifying meal because in the gospel we are united, right? And they are forgetting about this. They aren't recognizing what the meal is. They might see Christ. Yeah, okay, a wafer. It, it's Christ's uh, body and the fruit of the vine. That's Christ's blood. Okay, and off we go. It's like a ritual. It's just an event. But they don't see it for what it is. It is because of what Christ did for us. What each of these elements resemble. That is why we should wait for one another and die to self. If you're in Christ's body, you should love and serve the church in the same way you would love and serve Christ. As you partake, look around and rejoice in the diversity the Lord has put us in. Making this body one with Him and with one another. So at the Lord's Supper, look around. Pray and thank the Lord for this body and, and look around. It's wonderful to partake with you. It's wonderful to partake with you. Rejoice that in gaining Christ as your Savior, you gained His people as your family. But let's drill a bit deeper. So we are part of one body, right? One body, the church. But now it says they're not discerning the body which means they're not putting the body before themselves. The body means to love and serve the body. Now, brothers and sisters, you cannot discern the body or serve and love the body if you are not with the body, right? We need to strive towards being with the body as much as we can. Meeting up with one another, but most of all, meeting with one another. This is where we are united as one body. Brothers, sisters, there was a slogan years ago on TV. It said, Simonier. Simonier, we are one. That is our slogan for the church. Simonier, because we are one body. We are meant to be together. Brother, sister, we miss you if you do not gather with us. Let us make it a priority to gather and be involved in each other's lives. But now, a little bit deeper. Just drill a little bit deeper. Discerning the body would also mean that you would go to a brother or a sister that have offended you. Hang on a second. You've sinned against me. Now we need to partake of the Lord's Supper. I need to make right with you. So discerning the body means this family life. I don't know in your family, but being transparent, <whistles> lots of friction. Fights, helping each other out. Go say sorry, let's make right, right? That is part of discerning the body. Paul writes here, he says there are divisions and factions. Come on, what? That's not the body. Help one another. See one another as sinners, but then reconcile with one another. Because we are one body. You can't just cut off the finger. The finger is part of the hand. The hand is part of the body. The, sorry, the arm. The arm is part of the body. We are one. Remember Simonier. But that is part of discerning the body. So because of the gospel, the unifying meal, we can look upward to Christ. We can look inward for the forgiveness of sin. We can look around because God has placed us in a family. But because of all of this, we have the great privilege of looking forward. Look at verse 26. 
It says, let a person, sorry, um, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death, what? Until he comes. Oh, praise the Lord. Family, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. And then all this inward look, this yucky, heavy feeling of sin will be in the past. The looking around of, oof, I wish you didn't make tonight because then I can actually partake of the Lord's Supper. All of that will be in the past. We will be perfect when he comes again, if you are in Christ. There will be no more division. There will be no more hurt. When Jesus comes, we will be perfect in him and have none of the world's burdens. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait for that day. Look forward with joy to his second coming as we partake. All things will be made new. So, as you eat the bread and drink the cup, look ahead in hope and eager expectation. Jesus is coming again. And you can stone me if that does not happen. Because the Bible says it. And we can rejoice in that. So Paul closes this section from verses 31 to 34. Almost as he started. He's saying that, if we are true to ourselves and we recognize the sin in ourselves, we won't be judged because then we'll focus on Christ, right? We should allow the Lord to discipline us so that we don't stand condemned with the world and be judged like them. Paul tells them to come together. Eat at your homes, he says. Be satisfied there and then come and feast with the body around the table. That is what we need. We need to wait for one another. We need to discern one another. Don't act selfishly, but lovingly, in a unifying way, come together. Family, let us be reminded not to act like the Corinthian church. It's here. It's a reminder. Paul wrote to us so that we can learn from this. Let us wait for one another and act in a unifying way. When you're in Christ, you're in this body. And there's a commitment to one another as believers. The point of the Lord's Supper is the gospel. The gospel frees us from the condemnation of sin. The gospel reconciles us with God. The gospel gives us God as our Father. The gospel gives us Jesus as our older brother. And the gospel gives us all believers as brothers and sisters. The gospel unites us to Christ and to each other. Let's pray. Our oh God, it is glorious to think of what we are going to partake of. Just to think of Jesus and the work that he has done. Holy Spirit, help us to look upward. Help us to look inward. Help us to look around. Help us to look forward. Lord, all those things we can only do because of Jesus and the work, Holy Spirit, that you've done in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would save those that are not saved and bring them to me yourself. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.